Welcome to episode 20 of the Rex Chapman Show with Josh Hopkins. Hey, Josh, happy uh, happy Gary Payton episode. 20. Nice, 20. 20. Barry Sanders. Uh, Barry Sanders. Mm-hmm. Maurice Lucas. Maurice Lucas. Well done, yeah. Um, Ray Allen. Man. Ray Allen. Ray Allen. The Ray Allen episode. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know who we have today, Josh? Who? Who's that? We have Isaiah Thomas 1.0, the original. <laughs> <laughs> on 1.0, I love it. That's crazy, man. I mean, I, that's just a, a, so iconic. I mean, we've been watching him since I was a kid. I mean, it's one thing to talk to these players I watched as an adult, but as a kid, I mean, that's crazy. I know. I'm excited. Uh, you know, he's. Well, I still can picture that layup, you know, playing for Indiana where he t- took it and kind of threw it under his arm and laid it in. We were like, what the hell was that? Yeah. Just, yeah. Like, a fun player to watch and a, and a really nice guy. I've, uh, uh, we worked together at NBA TV for years, but um, even before that, we didn't play on the same teams, but always just had a real friendly relationship with Isaiah. Uh, That's great. Fascinating guy. Uh, let's talk a little uh, basketball before we get to Isaiah, and we'll talk a little okay. more about it. Okay. All right. Current basketball. Like, uh, what's going on with Team USA? Oh, man. I – since the last time we talked, we were like, they dropped a game. They'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, now they're losing players, protocols. They're adding our, – our guy, Keldon Johnson, oh, joins the team. Last night, didn't he? Yeah. Did he let him in scoring or didn't he so. – I don't know. He oh. was – had a nice nice dunk. I, I am, I'm concerned because, you know, now guys are going out due to – COVID protocol and all of that stuff. I I wonder, you know, if I wonder how many guys are going to end up, if, if you got to keep replacing guys, who's going to volunteer and go on short notice uh, during a, I mean, we're having a pretty big outbreak right now here. even. Yeah. Uh, It's the whole Olympics to me. It's, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, Uh, that's scary, but scary also is, and look, I love Keldon Johnson, the Kentucky yeah. kid. I mean, it's thrilling me to no end. But on the other end, Keldon Johnson is on the Olympic team. What yeah. has gone wrong? Yeah, he just <laughs> recently started, you know, starting on his NBA team. That's, yeah. that's how new he is. And, again, we're, no shade at Keldon. Love Keldon. He's going to no, be I love him. Um, but yeah, that's that. I think that's kind of what's going on. I, for whatever reason, USA Basketball decided to not lock these guys down, not put them in a bubble. You know, what we learned from the bubble was that you can do it. It can be done. Right. It's really restrictive. And so my thought on it is they just, they they probably couldn't get guys to come and and be willing to be in a bubble like that. And so now they're sick of it. They went to the bubble last year. They played a long season. You know, these guys want some time off. That's why I give all kinds of props to KD and Dame and and the guys who are doing it because it's a grind. But it's also you only get an opportunity to have USA across your your chest so many times. The guy we're talking to today boycotted in 84 and then maybe – screwed out of a spot later on, Isaiah Thomas. And those are big things. You know, he never got to do that. So yeah. I give props to these guys for, for going and doing it, but it does look like it's kind of in jeopardy now. So, Josh, let's get into episode 20 with Isaiah Thomas. Hold on there, Rex. The fans come to expect book club. They want to know what to read. Have you read anything this week? No. Me either. That's been book club. Now let's get to Zeke. Isaiah Lord Thomas, my guy. Welcome, Isaiah. Good to be here. Always, always happy to talk to you and see you. And, you know, it, I don't know, Rex, but for you and I, it was kind of like love at first sight. When we first met, it, it was like, I just always felt like a special connection to you. And I don't know why, why but, it, but it's lasted over the years, you know, I know. and I, I don't know. It just... It, it just seems like for whatever reason, when we saw each other, it was like, 
Rex, Isaiah, what's up? <laughs> you know, and it, it was always like that. So, and I, I, I'm, I'm thrilled to talk to you because I want to ask you some things today that I, I really don't know. Um, uh, first off, Josh, say hi to Isaiah. Uh, do you, I can't believe I'm here talking to you, man. This is a dream come true for me. I mean, a lot of the people we've had on here have thrilled me to death, but a lot of them are kind of current players or, you know, people still involved in the league, like coaching or whatnot. But I grew up, you were, you weren't even a basketball player. You were like a superhero, <laughs> you know, and to talk to you live is, is a big thrill. I grew up uh, in Kentucky um, just a little after Rex. And when you were playing Kentucky and uh, Dirk Minifield's team. Oh, and Bowie yeah, those, and, those were some great games. Those were some great games. And I'm so old, I had to listen to them on the radio. Ugh, yeah. That was every, the every game, it was a two or four point game. And wow. And Kentucky won both of them. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. Did what did yeah. you think of Dirk Minifield? He's one of my favorite players of all time. So Dirk and I, we 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 met at the uh, at at the what they used to call five star, and you know Dirk was always a uh, high energy, and you know when we met, you know I was from Chicago, and and we was just like you know always played against each other, got into the NBA, played against each other. Dirk was you know, fast and could shoot it. And, you know, just a great guy, really a great guy. Him, Sam Bowie, that whole, that whole squad was, they were good people. They were really good people. That was great. Go ahead, Rex. Uh, all right. I've always wondered, you know, cause I grew up, up, I was looking back over the, the years when the year you would have gone to Indiana, I was about 12 or 13. And so that's right, you know, as a young player in middle school or whatever, uh, I'm looking, I'm watching college basketball. And we in Kentucky, where I lived, we got more Indiana basketball. Well, you guys were on central time. We were too. So we didn't get tape delayed from games from UK. So I grew up the, one of the first teams, of course, I remember um, the team that went undefeated a little bit with Quinn. Oh, yeah. and them. But your, your year – your freshman year, I just remember being just mesmerized by you. And I've always wondered because I have, have a few uh, stories about being recruited by Bobby. Why did you go to Indiana? <laughs> it seems like such a mismatch. Yeah. And it, and it really wasn't my choice. And I, and I thank God for my mother making that decision for me because, you know, Back then, growing up, you know, you, you really didn't decide, at least I couldn't in my family, where I was going to go to school. My mom was, you know, she was the one making all the decisions. And, um, and, I, and I remember the, the, the press conference that she called, that she had, where she said, you know, my son has made his decision. <laughs> 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 He's decided to go to Indiana University and play for Coach Bob Knight. And Rex, I was sitting there like this. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, my mom was like, look, you got to get out of Chicago. You got to get away from, you know, family and friends. You need to go away, grow up. Coach Knight, you know, um, you know, the values that she was trying to instill in me as a, as a young man, uh, education, so forth and so on. Those are all the things that Coach Knight was talking about. And believe it or not, you know, those are the things that I didn't want to hear. I mean, who wanted to hear like, you know, you got to go to school every day. You got to do your homework every day. I'm going to be checking on you in class. I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to go to school there. But those are the things that attracted my mom. So my mom made the decision for me to go to Indiana. And it truly was one of the best decisions that she's ever made for me and one of the best things that happened to me playing at Indiana for Coach Knight. Did you ever did you ever have, you know, those days where you were like, this, I'm I'm back going back to Chicago, you know? Did you ever the have first, the first day, right? <laughs> <laughs> <The first day. laughs> Wait, not only the first day, the second day, the third day, the the first month, the second month, the third month, I was like, ooh. I uh, mean, there, you know, it was really, it was, it was basketball, go to school, basketball, go to school. I mean, no, no social life. I mean, it was in, in, 
it was good for me. Uh, that type of discipline is exactly what I needed. But that, that, that type of discipline is what I didn't want. You know, so I, I, I truly hated it. And I think all of us hated it at that time. And I remember like Woodson ha was the one who recruited me. And I remember after the first day, I, I grabbed Mike Woodson, who's the coach at Indiana. Now I grabbed him. I go, hey, man, why didn't you tell me it was really going to be like this? <laughs> he's, like, he's like, oh, we wanted you to come. So we couldn't really tell you how it was. But, you know, but it, it, it was it turned out to be. A, a really a great experience for me. And like I said, it's, it's just what I needed. But, at, you know, at, at 17 or 18, uh, who wants that kind of discipline and that type of, you know, work ethic being reinforced and instilled? Well, you, right. you are like a, uh, you have a very domineering personality. You, you, you uh, um, your way, you, you're not hard headed, but maybe, you know, in your way. And he's notoriously, <laughs> hard-headed I mean he's the most hard-headed anyone yeah. if you his picture is hard-headed do you remember a moment where the worm turned for you guys where you started to become friends because you left there on great terms we butted heads I mean every, every day because he thought you know he I remember he and, and and coach Bates and coach Bates was from uh Ohio old school coach and you know Rex and remember you know Justin back then that you know, during those times, like if you went between your legs or behind your back, oh, you were a hot dog. You were you were showing off. And <laughs> and I remember like, you know, Coach Bates coming down and and I and I came down and 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 in Chicago, there was no such thing as crossing over in front of you because right. guys are still in that. I mean, that's yeah. like that's like free yeah. chili. Yeah. So, you know, we we would go between our legs. You put your leg out there. So that would give you that extra burst, that extra, you know, push off where you can go by a guy, but you can also protect the basketball. So I remember I was going through my legs and, and Coach Bates said, put some mustard on that hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm from Chicago, right? So I'm thinking like he giving me a compliment. <laughs> He's hyping you up. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, so, now, so now I really like <laughs> you know, go behind my back. And he's like, oh, yeah, you just really hot dogging it up. Now, me coming from Chicago, when you reference food, hot dog, I'm hungry all the time. That means like, OK, at the end, I'm going to get some food. You know how your AAU coach is right to get some food at the end, right? So I'm thinking like, oh, man, I'm going to give me a big old hot dog. <laughs> So finally, Coach Knight start practice. You know, he he starts yelling at me, and and I, and I'm and, it, and it's still not clicking. Like, why why this dude going off on me? I'm like, I'm getting to the cup. You know, I'm I'm dropping off dimes and everything. And you know, he's like, stop going through your legs. And 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 really, I didn't realize that I was going through my legs that much. I just thought, you know, that's how I change direction. You know, right to left, change direction. Because, again, in Chicago, you couldn't put it in front of you because, you know, guys up on you like this, like, you know. And and so finally we got to the point where we were in practice and and he was screaming at me. And, and I finally I just said, hey, look, man, you you can talk to me. But all this yelling and screaming and stuff, I dropped the ball, Rex. I was like, either you're going to talk to me or we're going to fight. <laughs> You know, but all this screaming and hollering, you ain't got to do all that with me. Now, maybe you can do that with them, but you don't have to do that with me. Just tell me what you want me to do, and I will get that done for you. How did and he, then we came to a good understanding. He responded well to that? No, he didn't. He kicked all me right. out of practice. <laughs> <laughs> he kicked, hey, Max, he kicked me out of practice, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I had to run the stadium stairs, you know. Uh, you know what, though, Isaiah, I'm thinking back. So you were, what, 18, 19 at the time, 17? Yeah, uh, I, I yeah, just had turned 18. But the courage. I graduated early. Yeah, the courage to to do that and say that there on the spot, I, I couldn't have done. I would have been too too frightened to, to probably say something and too deferential, you know. Um, I, so you graduated high school early, right? Yeah. Did you always take your academics really, really seriously? And is that something you did or was that, again, your mom 
letting you know what you needed to do. That that was my mom. That that was my mom and 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 my dad. You know, and my and my sister, my older sister, because my mom and my dad were from Vicksburg, Mississippi, uh, and they were denied education. And so the the way that we was taught to get out of poverty was through the educational system. Uh, and my dad actually hated that I played sports. He didn't want me to play sports at all. He only came to one of my high school games and he only stayed for a halftime and then he left because he was like, you know, what are you doing? Um, but, you know, education was always important. I was always a, a good student. Uh, and, and one of the reasons why I was a good student is because, you know, I started kindergarten early because, you know, we didn't have babysitters, Rex, and my, and my mom was smart enough to work at the school. So working at the school, now I'm going into class with all my brothers, right? So they babysitting me. She's got a good relationship with the, with the nuns and the priests because she's cooking for them. You know, she cooked and she cleaned the floors and everything. And so they would let me be in their class. And so now I'm just, you know, I'm roaming around the school you know, three, four, five, six, you know, six years old. So I actually started kindergarten so early. So, you know, so when you talk about, you know, education in school, I was always in AP classes, always did well in school. Uh, I was an honor student and got my master's in education right now from UC Berkeley, uh, graduated from there with honors, uh, waited. All my classes were AP classes and it was a uh, you know, so I, I was always thirsty for knowledge. I always wanted to to learn more and 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 curious about you know how the world worked. Man, just amazing. I, I've uh, you know I've been a I've been a fan. We've worked together for years and and whatnot. But just you talked. To, I've I've heard you talk before about you know your brothers and and your sisters as well, keeping you trying to keep you out of trouble. You know what <laughs> what did they do? specifically are there some things that they did that you can remember that were like because you, you didn't live in a, a a real safe part of town and and uh just talk about that if you would so i i grew up on the west side of chicago uh six brothers two sisters and um you know the the environment uh in the neighborhood that i grew up in was it was very rough neighborhood uh and and um you know we moved around a lot uh, we were homeless uh, for, from time to time. Uh, and you always had to, to fight, you know, when you went to different neighborhoods. And, you know, being around my brothers, a lot of my brothers uh, fell into drugs and alcohol. Um, you know, after the Vietnam War, uh, heroin, uh, you know, hit all neighborhood. And it, it really, like, you know, knocked a lot of my brothers out. Uh, they became heroin addicts, um, you know, alcohol, you know, died from, you know, all types of drug use, drug yeah. use and drug abuse. But at the same time, uh, I can remember, you know, you know, damn, Rex, you taking me back. And I really got to be honest with you because, you know, the past. Uh, but I can remember sitting in, in you know, in, in my brother's room and, you know, he would be taken off with some of his friends and. And I watch him tie it up, you know, and, you know, he get the spike and he, you know, and mm. play the music. And, and I never forget him, like, you know, shooting it in his arm, like looking at me saying, Junior, don't you ever do this. Don't you ever do this. And, you know, he would nod out, you know, with the, yeah. with the needle mm. in his arm, you know. And, you know, so that was that was my daily life, you know, in terms of what I was seeing you know, with my brothers, but, but I got a chance to see them when they were at their best and then got a chance to see what drug abuse did when it put them at their worst. So it gave me a, a, a path of what not to do. And then they were insistent on showing me how this drugs or these drugs was messing up their life and encouraging me and telling me not to do this, not to take this path. But by the way, Junior, you give me your money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rex, Rex, you can understand, man. I never I forget my my sister bought me a a, a ten speed Huffy bike. I never forget this, right? And 
you know, I got my bike and Rex and I rode it one day and I came back home and my bike was gone. And I was like, somebody stole my bike. You know, we I'm I'm going around the neighborhood and finally, you know, I asked my brother, my oldest brother, I say, did you take my bike? He looked me dead in the eye and said, yeah, I took it. <laughs> that was it. Did you take my bike? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was it. It's like, it's like yeah. But it, it, it wasn't like, yeah, okay. And he looked at me like, yeah, I took it. Now, what, what you going to do about it? <laughs> like, that was it. <laughs> I want to talk about something a little different. Let, let's go. You so you you. Oh, I do want to hit this for a second because I remember leaving school um, early, and my coach didn't want me to. Um, yeah, it was a different situation. I wasn't Isaiah Thomas. Um, you were, and I think Bobby didn't want you to leave. Right? That he didn't want me to. Yeah, he didn't want me to leave publicly. Really tough for for you. Yeah, that it. But but this is where Coach Knight was really, really great to me at because he under he understood my family situation. So the the year we won it, Rex, we come back from Hawaii, and again I'm homeless. Um, Christmas break, I come back home, and my girlfriend, who's my wife at this time now. She drops me off at home and and I walk to our house and there's nobody in the house. It's the dead of winter right around Christmas time. And there's no phone. There's no lights. And I don't know where anybody's at. And so she comes back. Luckily, she comes back. And, you know, we sitting there in the cold and trying to figure out where I'm going to go. This is how I was living. And this is how my mom and everybody was living. So we win it that year. Go back to school. We win the N- NC2A championship. And now it's like everybody's talking about me going to the NBA. Coach Knight publicly is, you know, nah, I don't think it's good for you. But then you get the wink and the nod, right? Like, um, you know, I, you know I, I understand, like, you know. Okay. And, but, but it, wasn't, it wasn't like, hey, I'm with you. <laughs> you know, it was kind of like it was kind of like when they when that guy caught you stealing that payday, and he was like, "All right, man, just I'm gonna look the other way. Go, go ahead." <laughs> and that's what Coach Knight was was about me leaving school. It's like, okay, I'm gonna look the other way. I'm gonna act like I'm mad, but you know, I understand why you have to do this because Rex, we when I say we had nothing, we we had I not gone to the NBA, me and my family, we we. We literally were hanging by a thread in society. And I don't know if we, if another month would have went by, who knows where we all would be as a family and, and everything else. Because literally we were, we, we were, we were at the lowest of the low, you know. Isn't it crazy to think about? Because at the time it was called, even when I left, it was called, you went hardship. And that's what and you had called. to prove it called when I, I went as well. Yeah. I mean, not even close to being the same thing. Right. It, it was, yeah. it was just, I just, and if you think back now, how crazy, cause now the kids are being paid legally in college. Yeah. How crazy your family had to go through two years of that without being able to make money. Right. And, yeah. To go to and college. yeah, it, that was, you, you always want the next generation to, to be better and to benefit, you know, and and you and I, you know, kind of laying the, the, the groundwork for these next generations of, of players and everything else to to make money off their name, images, likeness, so forth and so on, and not have to go through some of the things that we went through, um, you know, and, and like you say, you look back on it and it, it, it is so crazy now that we had to go through that and neither one of us knew that when we signed that scholarship paper what that actually meant (laughs) we we (laughs) thought we'd hit the lottery yeah yes you know rex that was the first time i ever had a bed of my own you know i slept on the ironing board you know when i was younger slept in the closet slept on the floor 
first time I really had my own bed is when I got to college uh, in that dorm room. And I never forget walking in there crying. It's like, man, I got my own bed. I got my own room. And that was, that was the first time in my life I ever had my own bed where I wasn't sleeping with somebody, you know, one sharing it with my brother, one sleeping on the floor. You know, that was the first time I ever could like stretch out in the bed and be like, damn, this is all right. <laughs> It's just so awesome. I mean, and, and your first generation, I, that, that's what I want to ask too. I, I, I do want to get into the, you know, the Pistons and whatnot and talk about some of that good stuff, but I, I'm fascinated, Isaiah. I, I, I guess you talked about it earlier with your education. You took it really seriously. You know, I didn't have any sort of back, background in finance or business or anything. And, you know, I, I blew through the money that I made. How, as many of us do. Um, how did, how did you, how did you not fall prey to, to, you know, just spending what wildly and um, you know, how, how did you have that sense of, you know, financial uh, kind of sense to, to be serious about it? I, you know, I, you, you get lucky and sometimes you, you, you just, you know, you, as my mom would say, she used to call it mo mother wit, uh, where you just know, like, okay, okay I'm, I'm, I'm good. And, and Rex, I grew up, the only thing, I was so poor, the only thing I ever wanted, my dream was to be able to pay the rent, have a car, and put some gas in it. And if I can get those three things and have some food in the refrigerator, I'm good. I mean, really, I'm good. <laughs> you know that that's all I ever wanted. That's what I and and then when I got it, I was like, okay, I don't I don't really need anything else. So and and then I was like, okay, my my mom and my dad was like, okay, now how are we gonna help everybody else? So I spent you know I spent a lot of my money trying to clean my brothers up, you know, trying to get them clean, trying to get them straight so they can get back on their feet. Most of my money, Rex, went into, you know, my nieces, my nephews, you know, putting them through high school, putting them through college, trying to still uplift our family out of poverty. And I never forget. Um, so two stories I'm going to tell about my brothers when when they, when I sent them to rehab. <laughs> uh, the first time I, I, I went to talk to my, my older brother about going to rehab, I never forget it was. Rex, this was the this was one of the coldest lines I've ever heard. And I still remember it because he, he said it to me so smooth. He said, he said, Junior, listen to me. I'm a born to die dope fiend. He said, and it's not because I got some type of personality disorder. I just like it. <laughs> <laughs> This had to be the same brother that was like, yeah, I stole your bike. Oh, uh, yeah, the same brother. It yeah, had like, to be, he's, like, he's cold. He's like, he's like, yeah. He's like, he's like, yeah. Cause I got some type of personality disorder. I just like it. And I'm like, well, what am I gonna say to that, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> just All like right. with the bike, you're like, yep. gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so fast forward, now, now he, was, he was a heroin addict. Fast forward, right? He comes back to me years later and he's like, all right, I'm, 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 I'm ready now. Sure enough. Now he's ready. He gets clean, goes and graduates from college. Graduates from college. A year after he graduates from college, he comes back and he goes, all right, now I did what I wanted to do. It's about time for me to, you know, check out Rex. Three months later, he died. Yeah. Graduated from college and then died. Now, my other brother, who I sent to rehab, right? You know, you ain't supposed to be telling like who in rehab, right? So I ain't gonna say the person's name, but he called me up and he's like, "Oh man, thank you. I'm so glad you sent me here." You know, and I'm and I'm thinking Rex, like, "Oh, okay, this is good. You know, he he gonna be all right." You know, he's like. Oh, Junior, man, this is the best place you ever sent me. Man, thank you, thank you. I just met da-da-da-da-da. 
and we kicking it right now. <laughs> you know, she she cool and we talking and everything. And I'm like, hey man, you supposed to be, you supposed to be in there trying to get clean. You know, he's like, oh man, Junior, good looking out, man. I always wanted to meet her too. She fine. <laughs> I said he wanted a love connection. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, only, only, yep. only in my back. But anyway, right. they all, you know, a couple of them died, passed away. But then, like, they're kids, right? So all, all my nieces and nephews, you ask what I do with my money, sent them all to school. And now all the businesses that I have, Rex, they come back and they work in the business. They have to give six months free work off their student loans, right? And see if they like what they're doing. And if they like what they're doing, then I'll hire them and they'll come on and be employees. But, you know, yeah. I got to get my money back now. <laughs> <laughs> so That's so just... when, you look at, when you look at Isaiah International, you'll see, you know, it's all, it's all family. And that's what I'm, I spend my money trying to uplift my family out of poverty. And... Haven't got all of them out, but, you know, some of them, uh, you know, working, they can put food in the, in the refrigerator and and they can eat and they can pay the rent. And that's that's what we're doing. Uh, just beautiful. Um, uh, I, I, I want to change gears for a second. And my first year in the league, you guys were it, you guys were as good as you ever were. And I just remember playing you guys. I think I think maybe my first game was the night you guys got your championship ring, your first championship <laughs> ring, and right. opened the palace. And so I remember being out there, and you know, you guys. I just, I, I mean, hell, you'd been playing for what uh, eight, seven, eight years already. Yeah, yeah. So, you're an all-star. You and Joe, year after year, you guys have got this thing. And I just remember feeling so ill-prepared. You know, thank goodness I was a good athlete because I couldn't really shoot. I was just wild. <laughs> but I remember you guys really, like you said earlier, you and Joe just sort of, you know, bringing me on. If the play wasn't for you, you were over whispering in my ear, like, all right, trail me here, trail me here. Yeah. I had no idea what was going on. You guys were trying to help me. But talk to talk to me about um, that era with the Bulls, and really, what I want to specifically know is how much pain were you in um, the ankle game? So uh, the, the the ankle game, I Rex, I, I, I you know sometimes you you get the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, basketball gods touch you. Um, I don't, I don't, I really don't know how I played that well on my ankle. Um, I just know that I didn't want to lose. Um, and, you know, the adrenaline was kicking in and you had memories. Like I was thinking about my brothers and, you know, everything that they had gone through and, and you can't quit. You can't give up now. Like, you know, watching my mom, like walk to the, through the snow with, you know, some glad plastic bags and, and rubber bands around her feet because she didn't have no shoes. So she was just like, you know, so it was just, we got to carry on. And that's what I was thinking. And then I played well on it. And um, and I don't know how I played well, but I but I did. And it was really swollen, right? It was really yeah. and and I tried to play game seven, and I remember I had to. I had to come out of the game in game seven because my, my ankle was so big. It was actually rubbing on, on the, on the floor. Cause it was so, so big on my, you know, on the outside. And, and the trainer was finally like, junior, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you got to stop. And, um, but we should have beat the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, you scored 20, Five in the third quarter after rolling yeah, that they, ankle, and they cheated you us, could though, tell man. you were. They, they <laughs> cheated yeah, us. The foul. They, the foul. Yeah, that. Come on, man. That wasn't no foul. You can look at that still today, man. We Rex, we should have won three in a row. We'd have been the first team with three peep. And during that time, I was really competing against Magic Bird. Doctor J had just left, and Bird never won back to back, and. 
and we had one back. We I wanted to be the first to three P. Magic, you know, three P. I think Magic. No, no, they they won back to back, and we won back to back. Uh, we were the only two in that era, Magic and I, to win back to back championships. But I wanted to separate myself from Magic by winning three in a row. And had I won three in a row, then then the separation would have been clear. And if you go back and you you listen to Jordan's after Jordan won his third championship, they interviewed him. And you can go back and listen. What he said was because we were all competitive and competing against each, against each other. He said, now I've done something that Magic and Isaiah didn't do. I three people. Wow. And. Wow. And that's that that's how insane we were about winning, but not only winning, but dominating. Yeah. See, I, I just didn't want to win. It, it was like I I wanted to dominate my era at that position. And 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 we did. You really did. I, I just, you know, the I'm glad you brought up Michael because I know we've talked in the studio, we'll be sitting yeah. there talking during a commercial or whatever. And you know. <sighs> For my era, you know, when I came in, he he had just come in. He was, you know, a little four years older, where you might have been seven or eight years older. And so what I found, you know, because when most of the rest of us came in after him, you're like, oh, shit, that's Michael Jordan. Right. You guys didn't you guys didn't see him that way. He was younger. He was looking at you guys like that. And and I know we've talked before about, you know, the goats and the greatest of all time i don't who is your goat i know we've talked about this but who is it so so to me i when i when i looked at kareem dr j and magic and, and bird th those are the people that i was chasing right and and most people think like i'm like five years older than jordan i'm only a year older than him okay you know we okay. we were so you know it, it's like but he went three years of college and you went Two, okay, so he two. was just in the league a year or two before you, or after I was in the, you. Yeah, I, yeah, uh, probably what a year, two years. Okay, you know, okay. and I and and I look at it like okay, on the real, like when you're when you're 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, it ain't like you know, like Dr. J was five years older than me, right. so they they had some moment, yeah. you know. Bird, Bird, you know, Kareem, M, they were a little older than me, you know. So, uh, but but in terms of like Jordan and Chicago, you know, I, I just never, they were never my, my competition because they hadn't won anything. So I was looking at how can I beat Magic and Kareem, okay? How can I beat you know, Mikhail, Parrish, Bird, Dennis, John. how can I, how can I beat those? Cause they were all the champions. And, and in our era, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Dr. J, those were the dudes. <laughs> those were the dudes. I, I don't care what nobody talking, you know, this, this generation talking about, they talk about Michael Jordan, old Duncan, Duncan. Well, when I was coming in, well, nobody dunking like Dr. J. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, with the pro flying through the air, he, he was the dude. So when you talk about the greatest for me, and, and so I wanted to back it up with stats, analytics, career, so forth. There's no one who has had a better basketball playing career than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So to me, he was my goal. You know, when I talk about the greatest to ever play, I look at Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The numbers back it up. Not only do the numbers back it up, but also the winning backs it up. And then what he did socially for us as a community off the floor, you know, he 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 was the Muhammad Ali. He was the GOAT of all sport. And didn't, and at a time where it wasn't, I mean, could have really risked his career. Or well, he did. did. Yes, did risk yeah, his he did. He did. He he paid a heavy price, Rex. If you if you remember, like Kareem just got rolled back out onto the stage, you yeah. know, for a long time. Kareem, his voice was silent for a long time, and they and the the most tragic thing that 
the media did to Kareem that still pains me when I have to say this is they they said Kareem Abdul-Jabbar couldn't communicate. Yes. And you remember hearing that. Now, here's a I guy did. who has written 12 books, <laughs> got, got four document documentaries or six documents, and, and the media said Kareem Abdul-Jabbar couldn't communicate because they didn't like what he was saying. That's right. That's exactly right. I, I, I just remember coming in and, you know, people would ask me about Kareem. I didn't know Kareem, but they, and I'd be like, why? They, they'd say, why, do, why don't people like him? Why doesn't the media like him? Because he's not nice to the media. He doesn't play along. Well, I would be real distrusting too, right? I mean, one. And he, as you know, he's, he's a magnificent guy. Brilliant. Yeah. Do, do you see any of yourself uh, in Chris Paul? It, I see. I see a lot of my 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 game, but I also see where um, I probably was a little bit um, a little bit bolder on the offensive side in terms of yeah. it's like okay that knockout that knockout moment that you need where where it's like okay I'm. I can't pass it right now, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna make about two or three shots that's gonna really break your heart, that's gonna hurt your heart, and it's only gonna be six points, but but Rex, it's gonna hurt you. Yeah, so yeah. so take this right now. <laughs> <laughs> with you, I'm with you. And uh, and I, and I see Chris where when those moments, you know, when they when they rise up, at least in this series. He hasn't like, you know, grabbed it and said, OK, <clears throat> just me right now. But yeah. I think I think game six, I think he will. The Bucks are so hard to dislike. Giannis is, you know, just amazing, just smart, thoughtful. Chris Middleton reminds me of <laughs> how Joe Dumars used to bust your ass and help you up off the floor. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Holiday just doesn't have any any flaws in his game. Um, what about my. What do you think? What are your thoughts on our Kentucky guy, Devin Booker? Oh my God! I mean, every every, every time he hits a shot, right? Smitty and I do this. <laughs> that's great! That's great! <laughs> because he's like, <laughs> I love it, man. I, I, that's a, I mean, he is, he is great. a cold blooded killer. And and the thing that I like about him, particularly last game, okay, they lost game, they lost game five at home. But if you looked at him the last two, three minutes of, of game five, he got to the point where where he was like, you know what? Forget it, right? I'm taking the ball to the cup. And if I have to bow you in the mouth, I'm gonna bow you in the mouth. And if I have to curse the official out, I'm cursing the official out. And and if somebody want to throw some hands, we can throw some hands, you know. I'm, and and that's the point you have to get to, to be a champion. So what what I saw in Booker was that in those last three minutes, he he just wasn't playing basketball anymore. Now it's like the internal fight that you have with yourself. Am I going to push past this place where? The opponent may be mad at me. The referee may be mad at me. I may have to punch this dude right in his mouth. And when I punch him, I got to knock him out. <laughs> you, you, you know, those, those and, and he got to that place. And when he got to that place, those last two, three minutes, when he came off that curl screen and he dropped that three, it was a fadeaway three, Rex. It was a fadeaway three. Yeah, and, and it hit nothing but the bottom. I, I was like, okay, he he there. He he's at that point now, and I think he's gonna come in game six. I, I would I would be fearful of playing against him. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's a great book or two, and I'm sorry, but from now on when he hits it, I'm gonna be like, do the same thing. Just run back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, I just make so, that my permanent, my permanent face. He's yes. so cold blooded. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Uh, uh, Isaiah, what's your, what's your favorite movie? Uh, can I give you three? Yep. As All right. Okay, so Godfather 1 and 2. Okay. Ah, that's Come to you for it. <laughs> good, 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 good fellas. <laughs> okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, uh, a pattern here. Uh-huh. And then uh, Rocky. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, even though Rocky didn't win, you know, Rock, Rock, I, I related to that Rocky story, you know, how he, you know, he, he didn't have nothing. He couldn't, he didn't, you know, he's like, yo, Adrian, you know, we, we his eyes all swole up, you know, and he got beat up. But, you know, I, I related to that. You know, it was like that every time I, I watch that movie, I still cry at the end. I still get like a little tear jerk, like, oof, you know. Yeah, it sounds like you just like to watch Italians. Is that, is that- <laughs> well, well, we are, we are brothers. That's right. Whether 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 they want to admit it or not, <laughs> <laughs> you know that. I mean that when you go back, I mean that's <laughs> that's that's we we the same people there now. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I, he's the basketball guy. I just am the layman guy. Just a couple of things. I want to know when was the first time you knew you were different? Like as a kid, like this. I keep winning. I'm better. I, I picked this up easier than everyone. Look how I dribble the ball. And I, you know, like, when did you know I'm different? So I, I never knew I was different basketball wise because in my neighborhood, you know, we all, we all was the same size, you know? So, and, and Rex, you know, when you, when you're the same size as the other guy you're playing against, some, some days that guy may get you. You know, now, if you're bigger physically and stronger, then you have an advantage. But little guys, you know, we I, I never knew. Now, what I what I did always know uh, and where I competed really hard at is academically. I always knew like in the classroom, I always knew I was different in the classroom. Wow. And I knew I was different in the classroom before I knew I was different in basketball. You, were your siblings were were they uh, maybe uh, they didn't ever find out, but were they athletes, brothers? And yeah, my, my my oldest brother, you know, he he was the one. You know, okay. he you know he still had some of the old high school records uh, back then before um, Derrick Rose broke a couple of his high school records in terms of scoring. Wow. I didn't know that. So my no, my oldest brother was, you know, he he. He he played a lot like George Gervin, but he wasn't as tall as George Gervin. You know, he was smooth, probably because he was on heroin too. You know, he was, he was smooth. <laughs> oh, He'll take your bike. He's that smooth. Yeah. 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 Well, I also wanted to know just because you know you don't get the moniker "bad boys" without being some bad boys, and your team was stacked with. Tough, tough guys, as we are probably the all time toughest team because you had like uh, Mahorn and Rodman and, and Lambeer or Sally. If you guys at the bad boys, the whole team went into a cage match in the octagon, one man leaves. Who is it? From our team? Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. We, we, you know, we we stay together. Don't nobody leave. That, what if that, you didn't know? What if you didn't know each other? And they just no, nah, you can't do no. that on, on our team. Yeah, like yeah. one guy would leave. No, it, it, who who would win if you all you guys just were in a cage match together? One until oh oh, that's a good question. I I think we I think we all might die. <laughs> <laughs> Because because no no one would give up, you yeah, know what I mean. Great no, answer. No no one would give up. I I I, you know the type of team that we were, and this is what we prided ourselves on. Everyone talked about our physicality. We always talked about our mentality. We always described ourselves as a mentally tough basketball team. 
whereas everyone else would describe us as a physically tough basketball team. What made us so tough is that we could out-concentrate you, we would try to outthink you, and we would make you make mistakes. And in our physicality, yeah, that was part of the game, but that was part of everybody's game. Now, how could we get you out of your mentality? And that's what we, that's what we prided ourselves on, being able to outthink, outconcentrate our opponent for two and a half hours while they would spin out and make mistakes. Mm, yeah. Well, you, in practice, you had to see, I mean, tough guys like that, they had to, there had to be some squabbles in practice. Like a, I would like a Mahorn yeah. Lambeer. Did they ever just square up face to face? They had to, right? Yeah. You, 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 you fight, but this is what you find out when you are with tough guys, tough guys don't like to fight tough guys. Yeah. How about that? I don't like to fight tough guys, and I'm not a tough guy. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So, it, so it's like, yeah, we, we, w- we would get into it, but you would get into it, and it would be from a competitive standpoint. And then when, there, when it was time to throw fisticuffs, yeah, we would throw some fisticuffs, but then it would be like, okay, we got to stop now. Because if this keeps going, somebody's going to die. <laughs> You're, because we, you know, we, we, we wouldn't stop. What I, something I've always found kind of uh, just uh, bizarre is that Ricky Mahorn, Rick Mahorn is considered a bad, you know, bad guy, tough guy. He's one of the funniest, funniest, yeah. sweetest guys ever. He would hit me. He would, I, he, you know, he'd check me and then start yeah. giggling. Exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, that was a, a great, great group of, of guys. I remember coming in, uh, you know, early. I didn't know who Vinnie Johnson was. He came in and wore me out. Just they, they say, Rex, sit on his right hand. I would sit on it. He'd fake left, <laughs> get back right. You know, hey, to, he used, to, go ahead. He used go ahead. to kill Joe and I every single day in practice. Vinnie Johnson was the best guard hey. in practice every single day. <laughs> He would he would kill us because there was nothing oh. was, was nothing we can do with him. He was bigger yeah. than us. He was stronger than us. He would lean on us, and then you couldn't you couldn't fight him. You couldn't beat him up. So it's like, all right. <laughs> well, you were so great from day one when you entered the league. You were an all star that year. Do you do you did you ever have a welcome to the NBA moment where where you got there and you were like, oh, this guy's different. Oh, okay. This is different. Um, that you got to think about that is amazing. It is. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I, immediately I go, oh, yeah, this guy, this guy, this guy. Yeah, my, 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 I think I still hold a, the rookie record. Uh, my, my first game in the NBA, uh, I think I had 31 and 11 uh, against Milwaukee. Uh, but I, I tell you the guy who who really like had my number, like, and it and it took me a long time before I could get him was Michael Ray Richardson. Really? Mm. Oh man! Long and wiry. Rex, yeah. Rex, he, he had me. I mean, he had me crying like real tears. Wow. Like after the game, I would call my girl. I can't. I can't do number. I can't do that. And then he then he would talk to me. Be, look! 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 Look him up! Look him up! Frank, wait, we up two. We up two. They call timeout. He comes out of timeout. He goes, look, 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 I'm going to shoot the three on you. I'm I'm, going to shoot the three on you. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm in my mind. I'm like, okay, he he ain't going to shoot the three. He trying to, he trying to fake me out. So they run a, they run a zip down. He comes off, catches it, turns around, bam. I told you I was going to shoot the, 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 the three on you. I told you I was going to shoot the three on you. I'm like, oh. You had the number of just making you cry again. I'm crying. So good. Hey, do you still, do? You, have you gotten over or do you get sick of or have you now relented to it's one of the, you know, greatest moments in NBA history. But when you hear like, uh, steal my bird underneath the DJ. Yeah. Do you, does that drive you crazy? You were like, 
I was part of an incredible moment. No, you you know what drives me crazy is that that play before that I had made the winning shot, yeah. and I and I had never made you know I had never really made a mistake before in a game like that where I was the one who had thrown the ball away. Now, had I not come back and won back to back championships after that, it, it it would drive me crazy that 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 would be the highlight that they would show all the time. But it was a great play by Bird. It was a great play by DJ. Now, I got some great plays, too. They just don't show you them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. You know, if, you, if you go back the following year, game five in the Boston Garden, look at my numbers and see what I did, you know, to move past that point. But, you know, that, that, that's part of learning, you know, and that I'm glad they show it because it gives me a chance to, to talk about how I bounced back from that moment and that moment didn't crush me, where potentially it could have crushed me. Mm -hmm. But fortunately enough for me, I was able to bounce back from it. That's amazing perspective, <laughs> truly. Oh, man. Um, if you could have dinner with anybody. Right now, you'd go meet them, have dinner that somebody you'd like to chew their ear. Who would that be? Dead or alive? Sure. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I would want to have dinner with Jesus Christ. And I would okay. just want to ask him, hey, man, like, is that your dad for real? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, tell me, like, what, how y'all, how y'all talk? What, what, what y'all talk about? You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, Rex, don't you want to know? <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's like, oh, that's I, great. Man, <laughs> so, on, man, talk to me, <laughs> Dick, man. I love you so much, man. And I want to tell you, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but you gave me one of the greatest, you and Joe gave me one of the greatest uh, you know, kind of feelings uh, as a pro that I had. We, Michael had gone to play baseball. You and Joe had been hurt much of the year in at Detroit and you guys were getting closer to the end. And I was about 25 or so. And we played you guys one night in Baltimore and uh, you both came out and said, you're going to make the all-star team. And I said, yeah. And I had a, I, I was having a, a good year, but um, it was probably my statistically my best year. But, but you guys told me that. And I, I, we were at the jump ball and I was like, this is really weird. And uh, <laughs> the next day we played the Spurs at home. They told me I made the all-star game and then I dislocated my ankle <laughs> and they replaced me in the game. But that, that moment moment in uh, Baltimore I'll never forget and and uh, I I just I love you for more than that but thank you thanks buddy well well we thank you and we 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 took our role as as champions seriously and we you know we we always try to you know help the opponents even though like you know we were competing against people we always felt like the knowledge that we had gained our responsibility as players was to share it and help the other player get better. Because as much as the Celtics beat us, you know, Dennis Johnson, Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Cedric Maxwell, ML Carr, them guys would grab me and grab us and say, hey man, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. That's how we beating y'all, y'all, y'all. Y'all get happy, <laughs> you know, and then y'all start doing crazy stuff. Y'all start beating yourselves. Don't do that. You know, so they was teaching us why they were beating us. Wow. And to this day, I get a call from ML Carr. I'll get a call from Cedric Maxwell and Mikhail and I. You see how Mikhail and I, Mikhail and I like that. We've known each other since high school. People don't know that. But it's like, you know, those guys taught us so many great lessons that, we felt that it was our responsibility, you know, to pass on those lessons, to pass on that knowledge. And that's what we tried to do to the rest of the league. You did. Zeke, thanks, buddy. Thanks for coming on. Enjoy. Hey, your, you're welcome. Enjoy your next couple of days in Milwaukee and uh, probably be seeing you in Phoenix in a few days. Rex, I just want you to know, brother, you got more out of me than 
anybody has in the interview situation. <laughs> I, well, I let it. I, Rex, when I get off, I'm going to be like this. I got you all up in my chest. I got to get you out. <laughs> Therapy. Thanks, buddy. Well, Love you. All right. Love you guys. All right. A pleasure, man. A pleasure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. That's Isaiah. Josh, thoughts? Did not let did not let me down at all. He's so iconic. And like I said, being, you know, it's different being in awe of players when you're their age or you watch them play as an adult. But when you're a kid and you watch someone play like that, it's like a, a superhero. And just to hear his laugh. You know, because oh. it's gets such a distinct laugh. You could turn on the radio, and if it's in the middle of his laugh, you're like Isaiah Thomas is laughing, and just mm -hmm. to hear him, it was just, I was just like Isaiah Thomas is laughing. It was thank you, thank you for letting me be a part of this. Oh, come on, man, team game. Uh, no, I just find him fascinating, and just, yeah, you can also see why he's had a job in television for years and years and years. And charismatic, thoughtful, smart, caring. Uh, not hit, not without his flaws, not without a couple of uh, missteps along the way, but always trying to um, to improve. And man, I, I've I've sat around and heard I'd heard some of the stories about his brothers uh, and his family. You know, when we're just sitting talking before a show or whatnot. But there's more of those that that he has that you know. Sometimes he'll tell him and it'll, it'll bring him to tears. And you could kind of see when he when he started talk, talking about that. And um, I just I find it I find him fascinating. Also, I remember playing against him. And, you know, I, I remember having those moments with different players where all of a sudden, you know, he's the guy I've been watching play at Indiana since I was 13, you know, and now I'm playing against him. And I just remember there being a time where all of a sudden we'd be matched up. And I would go and score. And for a split second, I'd go, oh, my God, that was Isaiah Thomas. I did that yeah, against sure. Isaiah Thomas. But he did that every time against me. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, just – and he was a, just a unbelievable ball handler. And I brought up the Chris Paul thing just because I do. I, I don't think their games are so much alike. I think their mindset and their I want to kill you is very mm -hmm. yes no. absolutely I, I wanted to know i'm glad you asked that at, at times it, it can be you know it can come off as a dirty play or a cheap shot or something like that when you know they are out there just trying to kill you and well, like he said they're not he's not there trying to make friends he's right. not there oh, i'm sad i don't want to have him not like me he yeah. wants to win first yeah, and you know the difference in this era and that era. Every one of these guys right now, you talk about Team USA, you talk about the play, these guys have known each other and had each other's phone numbers since they were 10 on the AA. Right, right. And they all know and like one another. Back in the day, well, in the 80s, no cell phones yet. You had the you had the people on your team's phone number. If you had a, a friend, the only other person I might have the phone number on the other team would have been Sam Bowie and Kenny Walker, who I know from Kentucky. You don't right, know right. other guys on the other team. And right away, you just, it was an era where you don't like them. You damn sure don't go party with them or go, you know, a night before. You're not hanging out. You're not friends like that. Right. So, but now it's just, a, it's a different world. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and there was so much I would love to ask him, like, you know, his post career is uh, he's philanthropic. You know, he put uh, I read like over 75 kids through college while he was playing for the Pistons. Yeah. You know, I he, mean, he's amazing. He, and he, he does. He has tons of business uh, businesses that he that he runs. He's just a fascinating, fascinating guy, and a, got a got a degree in criminal justice, buddy. What? Amazing. Went back to his degree. I'm still about sixty hours short, by the way. In case oh, you were wondering, I'm more than uh, that. All right, bud. That's episode twenty of the Rex Chapman Show with super cool Josh Hopkins. Uh, join us next week, same time, same place. Powered by BasketballNews.com. <laughs>